Hope you get better. Thank you. Okay, I've got five o'clock, so I'll call to uh, call this meeting to order of the Hartford City Council on January the 28th, 2021 at five o'clock Central Standard Time. Uh, I'm going to ask Brother David if he'll lead the group in an invocation for our meeting tonight. Yes. Let's bow our heads. Father God, we just want to give you the thanks. we asking you to touch us, feet, and Lord, touch Brother George, our mayor, Lord, and touch the board members here, Lord. Bless us and touch our city, touch the, our country, Lord, and Lord, just be a blessing to us, Lord. And Lord, we're asking you to move this covert out of here, Lord, so we can get back to normal as you see fit in Jesus' mighty name. Man. All right, uh, we'll open the floor for visitors, and the first visitor I want to recognize is Dan Drain, who's our uh, accountant, and uh, uh, ask that uh, he make the presentation of our uh, audit done for last fiscal year's records. Yes, Christy, this is Lisa with the City of Hartford, and, mm -hmm. and we are ready for our audit presentation. Okay, hold on just a moment. Let me transfer you. Okay, Christy, this is Lisa with the City of Hartford. Can you hear me, Dan? Yes, I hear you. Do you hear me? Yes. Okay. And we are ready for your presentation. Well, you put me first thing in, didn't you? Yes, we did. Okay. All right. You should have uh, two items. The small, uh, staple of two-page one is just called a SES-114 report. And the purpose of it is we're required to give that to the governing body because you know, we conduct the audit strictly uh, day in and day out through uh, management and through the staff. So uh, this one, as you can see on page one, no difficulties encountered in the performing the audit, no corrected or uncorrected statements, uh, no disagreements with management. So we move on to the big one, which is the actual audit report. The opinion beginning on page one is a clean opinion. So the first uh, presentation that you should have on that would be the statement of net position. Under this, the total net position on the bottom is 3,354,240 for the uh, governmental activities, 5,409,982 for the business side, total of 8.7 million, which is essentially the net worth under that presentation. Page five is a statement of activities. Uh, under that presentation, again, you see the same net position at the end of the year. And if you look for the governmental activities, actually increased down near the bottom by $543,444. City overall uh, net position increased by $453,177. That presentation for those two is on the business-like basis where the governmental side converts everything, your city hall building, all your police cars, fire equipment, is all converted to a business-like basis, which is uh, the, uh, uh, the same as you would be doing for a private business. On page six, this balance sheet is a traditional one. This one is closer to what you would budget on. The total assets for the uh, governmental funds is 2.3 million. The fund balance is 2 million. And at the bottom, it reconciles it and shows you how to get from the $2 million down to the $3,354,240. Because you see this one books capital assets of almost $3 million. And then most of the rest of this, your case, has to do with those pension adjustments that have to be made at the end of the year. 
Uh, page uh -huh. seven is uh, revenues, expenditures, changes in fund balance for governmental funds. And this is the income statement under this presentation. Net change in fund balance of $312,000 year in a year. So then when you, uh, when you see the reconciliation, then changes in net position of government activities, uh, and uh, this shows uh, the differences in when you book uh, capital outlays versus depreciation and the differences in pensions and so forth. Page nine breaks down the net position on proprietary funds between water, sewer, and sanitation. Uh, the uh, segment revenues and expenses and changes in net position on page 10 also breaks that down. Uh, if you look at that going across, it actually lost $90,267. Biggest part of that being the uh, water fund, a uh, loss of $129,000, sewer fund $87,000, sanitation made $127,000. Page 11 is like the cash flows. This is actual money in and money out. And you see that even with indicating that loss, uh, cash uh, overall increased for those funds for water, sewer, and sanitation by almost $64,000. Uh, page 12 is uh, taking the net position of fiduciary fund. Lots and lots of notes beginning on page 13. Consideration probably on page 23 is the changes in fixed assets. And there were not a whole lot of additions during the year last year. Of course, you weren't involved in any of those big projects like you had been in a couple of years before. Uh, the additions on the governmental, only 168,571. And there were some decreases for some items that were disposed. So the, the, the only reason then basically that the net decreased slightly overall is because of the amount of depreciation that was claimed on it. Uh, business type activities uh, actually only uh, bought about $145,000 of new assets, but then the depreciation was over through it was $305,000. Bottom of that page breaks everything down between the uh, functions. Debt structure on page 24. Very, very, very little debt as far as the uh, uh, governmental activities are concerned. Uh, the only, only real debt uh, mentioned very much is on the uh, water and sewer funds. Uh, no, no new debt at all. Uh, everything was deleted. Total between the two, looks like about $165,000 of debt that was retired. And then you can see what the ending balance is and the amount that's due for next year. Uh, page 25 shows uh, what it takes to uh, retire that debt. Then, when you begin on page 26, middle of that is pension plans. And as, oh, as you see, over the last couple of years, it's very similar. You have page after page after page of explaining the pension plans, which is a uh, county employee retirement system and then the, the insurance fund. Uh, 33 is restricted assets and position. Um, supplementary information on 35, uh, is a, there's a budget. And you can see that the revenue is $71,000 more than uh, the budget. It, the expenditure is slightly more, but uh, overall, if you look at the changes in fund balance, the uh, city had $176,000 net uh, a favorable variance over the uh, amount that was budgeted. Several more pages of pension information. And relative notes. Supplementary information here break down the three small funds, cemetery, LGEA, and road funds. 
page 43 is the income statement. Um, the uh, cemetery fund uh, spent a fair amount of money during the year without a whole lot of uh, basic income, so there was uh, money transferred in to keep it afloat. LGEA had almost $13,000 positive, and then the road fund collected took in the normal amount of revenue for it, but just really didn't uh, do a whole lot of projects here in the year. Page 44, general fund expenditures, and that just breaks everything down by general government, police, fire, economic development. Page 45 is the uh, independent auditor's report on, uh, basically, that this is the one where we put in findings, and there, there were no findings. Uh, page 47 is a management letter, and the only thing discussed there is uh, the uh, uh, place securities for um, uh, all bank accounts. So, do you have any questions? This, uh, this was basically as clean a penny as we've ever done on this, and probably one of the cleanest opinions that we've ever done on, on any city anywhere. Appreciate it. Uh, Dan, I don't, I don't think anyone has any questions. Okay. Uh, I will put a, a footnote in it and say we do probably seven or eight cities, and I would have to say that seven or eight that we do uh, Lisa has the best grasp of basically why she does what she does probably of any of them because we have a lot of them where they essentially go through the motions and, you know, at Hartford, um, you know, if, if we have anything to discuss there, you know, Lisa knows what we're talking about and if, if there's something that uh, we see differently, you know, she's, she's one of the few who can actually defend her position on it, so I thought I would like to throw that in there. Absolutely. Appreciate that. Uh -huh. So does that need so. to come in a motion to accept that offer or anything to that? We do. Mm -hmm. George? Yes. yes. Is there a motion to accept this audit report? I think Bo just made it. I'll make a motion accepted. All I'm right. It. And second? Second it. All right. Any questions at all? Any discussion? Then all in favor, uplifted hand, please. All six is yes. All right. Thank you. And thanks to Dan for okay. uh, bringing this audit to us this early in the year. We appreciate it. Okay. Well, thank you all. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank all right. You. Have a blessed evening. All right. Do we have any other visitors present who wish to speak to address the council? You want to? I can, yeah. Uh, sure. Jeff Renfro is here for code enforcement. All right. Hey, good evening, Mayor. Good evening, Council. 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 Good evening, Mayor, what I'm passing out, I'm passing out one of the red door hangers and with also the Excel spreadsheet of uh, the violations that I went through uh, this month for the month of January. <laughs> so I put the red door hanger on there that way uh, the new council members can see this is, this is what, uh, whenever I go out, this is the violations that I look for. Uh, if a, a property is in violation, I'll hang this, I'll fill it out, hang it on the door, and it gives the uh, property owner or the resident a notice. And uh, they usually have seven days to uh, correct the violation. Uh, I go back in seven, usually seven, between seven and ten days, I'll go back and check on the property. And then if it's not uh, cleaned up, picked up, or hauled off, uh, I'll work with Lisa, I'll, I'll fill out an official warning and we'll mail that to them. And then that's like, kind of like the second notice there. But if you look on 
the, uh, the head spreadsheet there. These are the properties that I've went through for the month of January. There's like 20 on here. And so uh, it, I, I got a few on there highlighted just to bring your attention. Uh, these are the filled ones for the month of January. That, uh, sorry, Tara. You're fine. These are the ones in, for the month of January that I'm still working on. Sorry. Uh, and so uh, one thing I did learn, I, I have learned, and Lisa helped me do this, uh, you look at the property, uh, you know, because a lot of times you'll go to a property and the people that live there is not actually the property owner. And so we, we kind of look at the property itself. But uh, you see those ones, and I apologize for all my notes on the right-hand side didn't copy on, on your guys' uh, copy there. But like the, uh, the first one there on uh, highlighted 1215 Johnson Street. So uh, I did talk to uh, Miss Decker there, and I did go by and double-check. Uh, they had some vehicles out there that they were working on. She said her son works on vehicles there. But they moved the vehicles, but they still have a lot of cleanup to do. Uh, so that one's continuing. Uh, I don't think, uh, I'll keep an eye on that and make sure if I need to send another warning, I will, but they are making progress. Uh, the next one down to 1208 Johnson Street, which is right up the street from it, uh, there's no change there, and so we mailed them a warning on the 26th, January. Lisa mailed that out for us. Uh, the next one that still interests is the Dwight Avenue address. Uh, they have a, a like a, 1986 blazer sitting out there with flat tires and stuff like that. No change, but and that is a, a rental property, so I will be mailing out a, a notice to the, uh, well, I think we already did the 26. We mailed out one to the, the homeowner. Uh, Kirk Street Mobile Home Park, uh, new owner here. Uh, the place is, is always, uh, it's just trashed everywhere. Uh, I have talked to the residents. Uh, they claim that it was left over from the previous tenants. And any, anyway, uh, Mr. Diaz there is a new owner. I did go by there. He has been uh, cleaning up. He, he said that he was ordering a big dumpster and he's gonna be remodeling and cleaning up a, tr a lot of trash there. So that's still a clean up in progress. He has been cleaning up. And then that, that bottom one down here on East Union Street, uh, I did check with uh, them yesterday. They ha are making progress there. And uh, they also had a problem with a uh, barking dog there. And, and when I talked to them, it, it is getting better there. But uh, this is the month of January. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see my number down there in the lower hand, left hand corner. It didn't print out very big. But uh, if you guys come across anybody who needs help or want me to go out and look at anywhere, I don't mind to go look. Uh, I don't, don't have a problem at all. And that's all I got. If anybody has any questions, I'd be glad to answer them. Thank you. Hey, Mayor, I've got one question. All right. Go ahead. Do we still own, do we still own bins that were on code enforcement? Do we still own the uh, where the recycling building was? Yes, we do. What would it take to clean that up right there in, in itself? Well, we've had some people that have been trying to salvage uh, the metal out of it. Uh, but all we need to do, if I think, is just start hauling it off to uh, in the landfill or down to the lagoons. Uh, unfortunately, right now, it seems like we're just hurting for time to get it done, you know. Oh, man, I just, I feel like if we're going to enforce it, I think we should hold ourselves accountable on such stuff like that being seen on our properties. Sure, I understand. Uh, uh, I'll talk with Jason about it, see what, uh, what his uh, thoughts are on it, because uh, uh, we do have quite a bit stored down there, and... Uh, you know, it is visible to the public, and it right. does, uh, uh, does create an eyesore. So, that's all I've got. I just, that's something I had on my mind there. So. Sure, I appreciate it. Anybody else? 
Any other visitors? No, that's all. All right. Uh, we'll take a look at the minutes of our last meeting. And as soon as you've had a chance to look those over, I'll entertain a motion to uh, accept those or make changes. <coughs> make a motion. Ball makes a motion. All right. Second. David. All right. Any discussion? All in favor of accepting those minutes, uh, up in hand. All yes. All right. Thank you. Uh, Tara, have you got anything for us tonight? N nothing outside of what we discussed previously. All right. Uh, take a look at the financials and let's see if there are any questions about those once you've had a chance to. Uh, hopefully, you'll take a look at those before you come to the meeting so that if you have questions, we can get right into them. And, uh, but I'll entertain a motion when you feel uh, comfortable uh, to accept those uh, financial reports. Mary Bell made a motion. Second. Stay sure. All right. Any discussion about any item? If there is none, then we'll proceed to vote. If you're in favor of accepting those financial reports, lifted hand. All yes. All right, thank you. Uh, the floor is now open for old business. The only old business we had left over from the last meeting was the discussion about replacing the roof on the priest house. Uh, I don't know if the, if the station bowl know about it, but uh, the city owns a house up behind the water plant. And uh, the, the occupant right now is uh, Josh Ashford, who's one of our water plant and floor, uh, operators. And he has come to me and said that there are, there are leaks developing in the roof and so it's been a while since uh, the roof has been addressed so uh, I got two, uh, two beds on a metal roof but uh, the last council wanted to go about shingles as well so what we have now is uh, is an offer from Ralph Porter uh, and if you have other people that you want to involve you know We'll go through it, but uh, Ralph has given us an estimate on uh, replacing the shingles and putting new shingles on. Of course, there's going to have to be some sheeting replaced, but uh, new shingles or putting a metal roof on or putting a better metal roof with a standing seam on it. And so we've got those three estimates, and Lisa has those right now. And she can present those to you, and then the floor will be open for a motion and then discussion. We are passing it currently so the council members can see it. Okay, that's fine. Jerry, you want to re just read it out loud? So remove shingles and install 25 year shingles and uh, dormer side siding and flashing to replace. And the materials and labor is $7,775,000. $7,075? It's got $7,775. $7, okay. And uh, that's for the metal? That's for shingle. shingles. Shingles. Shingles, okay. And uh, 36 inch uh, metal uh, with tarp, heavy tar paper is 9,510. Standing seam metal is $12,480. What, what is that? A standing seam in it. It's a more just decorative type metal that's got the stand up edge. It has the screws of sorts. And right. But it's the highest at 12460 
I will I will report to you that in discussing this with Ralph, he says for that roof, that particular roof, the way it's cut up, it, it would uh, be much easier to put the uh, shingles back on it. There is a flat roof back there that we'll have to put uh, some kind of a sealer over it, but the Ralph recommended putting the, the 25 year shingles on it. Has it been appraised for any hail damage or anything? The entire roof would be guaranteed for 25 years or just the shingles? Well, the shingles have a life expectancy of 25 years. I don't know that they're guaranteed for 25. The metal would be, would have a life expectancy of about, about 40 years. But, uh, the roof has uh, has a lot of. It had to be cut. Uh, it's not just a simple operation of putting that metal on. Stacia, I had I had asked, has it been appraised for any hail damage? Uh, and the reason I asked that we had our roof replaced, and a large portion of it we didn't even know we had hail damage, and it was paid for through our insurance company. It's not been appraised. Yeah, uh, we can have that, but, um, Old Hill Damage didn't pay for it. Hey, Mayor, I talked to Josh today, and he said that he's, I guess he's got his, you might correct me if I'm wrong, but he's got his carpet ripped up and everything right now from, from the water coming in. Mm -hmm. Right, it's, it's, so, it's getting um, worse. I'll, uh, I'll, uh, make the motion to accept, um, but with that emotion, I'd like to see if we can get a home inspection done on that house itself because I'm afraid with due time, this is going to be a liability issue. Um, you know, I've seen some of the, it looks like it shifted on one side there, so I, I, I'd like to put entertain that in a motion to get it inspected for the All right. precautionary of the, uh, for the city liability. What, what right. option? Are you making a motion? For making a motion for the... Shingles or the metal? Metal. Which yeah. one? The, the metal. Regular standing sink? Uh, regular. 36 inch metal? Yep. Is there a second? Is that the one I will second that for the metal roof. Mary Bell seconds the metal. Okay. Any discussion? That's the 9,000, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. They, the David was asking. On the metal, do they tear the shingles off or just put metal over them? They'll have to replace oh, yeah. the board under the shingles, so they'll have to tear the shingles off of it. Yeah, because they'll have some sheeting that will need to be replaced. So they'll all have to come off to do that. But I, one yes, price, so nine, nine, five, ten, that includes everything on that, replacing the sh sheeting on it. Right. You won't have to replace all the sheeting just where it's been leaking. What happens if they find more problems than that? Well, the price will have to go up, but you don't know what you got until you I get know, underneath it. I of know, it. but we need I to mean, get that thing fi fixed if we got somebody living up yes. there, and especially an employee. Yes. Right. Yep, I agree. Well, I don't care for the metal roof. You don't like it? got a longer life than shingles most of the time. Yeah. Here and we have a leak on a metal roof. It's almost impossible to find the leak. Yeah. Everybody for the home thing, you know. Yeah. That's right. I, I just worry about what they may find under that, under the uh, plywood they're going to have to replace. It's been leaking bad. They have a place a bunch. Yeah, and we put it out for a month. For, Could have a mold issue. Yeah, it needs to be done now. Yeah, it needs to be done immediately. Well, uh, Mayor, can we entertain, if it's got nine on it, can we put another thousand add on it for board? Can we do that? Oh, for the seating? Yes. Uh, yeah, we can. Or we just and if it don't get used, it goes back sale. into the... Do what? Can you repeat that? I mean, we can that ourselves just supply it to him. Okay. 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 
right. So you got a motion on the, you got a motion for the right. 9,500 for the middle plus 1,000 for sheeting. Wait, are, are, are you agreeing? Are you amending your motion for the 1,000 for sheeting or are you? Well, if, if we can purchase it ourselves. I, okay. Yeah, well. There's very many pieces of plywood that's going to need to be replaced up there. Well, let's just. You know, I'd say this. three or four pieces about it probably is all we're going to have to replace. I don't think it's that bad. Let's just hope there are no raptors. Yeah. So you are not amending? Um, no, I'm not. Okay. okay. So, so you want Okay, any more discussion? No. Okay, if not, then we'll proceed to vote. Uh, if you're in favor of the uh, replacing the roof on the priest home with the cheaper uh, metal uh, signified with the uplifted hand. We have uh, five yes. Okay. And if you're opposed, uh, uplifted hand. We have one no. Okay. So the motion does carry. All right. Um, that's all the old business we have, so we'll go on to our new business. Um, we have a resolution here regarding the, the uh, comprehensive plan for the uh, planning and zoning, and it's the next to last page in your packet. I'll get an email to Lisa that she can send out to everyone. Hmm? I'll get an email to Lisa that has it. She can send it out to everyone. It's it's pretty involved. Uh, so. They don't make copies for the... Well, nobody has really met in person in a while due to COVID, so we've been doing the majority of everything via email. So you got to... cities adopt the resolution then we'll come back together and, and finalize everything yes right any more discussion regarding this resolution if not then we'll vote on it if you're in favor of accepting adopting this resolution uh, signified by the uplifted hand oh yes all right thank you um, the code enforcement member, I've not, I've not been in the office, so I haven't done anything regarding uh, finding a replacement for our code enforcement uh, board. I will accept any kind of suggestions anybody has at any time. would welcome them. So, uh, but we, we are lacking one code enforcement. 
enforcement member on our board. Um, I have uh, two other things to bring up. Uh, George, uh, George, George, yes. uh, if you remember, we called and spoke with Janet Coulter, and she was willing to continue on, to the, on the board. If, right. If you want but to. I think we're missing Robbie, aren't we? You're we got to replace him. Coppage is the one that we need to replace. Yeah, Robbie Coppage. But if yeah. you but if you want to add Janet Coulter, you could do that tonight. All right. Uh, then we can go ahead and do that while it's fresh on our minds. All right. If you're in favor of adding Janet Coulter or keeping her on the code enforcement board as a uh, member of that board, uh, would you uh, signify by the uplifted hand? Do we want to? We need. Yeah, we, we need to have somebody do a first and second on a motion mm -hmm. there, George. Right, right. Okay. Right. David made the motion for first. Second. Tony on second. All right. Thank you. Uh, discussion. If there is none, then if you're in favor of Jay Coulter uh, reigning on the code enforcement board, uh, signify by the uplifted hand. So yes. Okay. Thank you. My fault. Um, we've got a situation with our water billing, and Sarah asked me to to bring to you uh, our dilemma. I'll say a dilemma, um, and look for suggestions or recommendations or uh, keeping it the way it is. What happens is, like uh, we have months where the 10th, which is our final day for receiving uh, the base pay, uh, base bill, the 10th falls on a weekend. Now, uh, we've got a, a drop box for people to deposit their payments in over the weekend. Uh, but what happens is people, our people think that we end up with uh, the 10th been all weekend, they get the 11th to bring in their their bill. Of course, uh, our ordinance says on the 11th it's a day late. And another issue that we have is with people who um, make payments. Well, for example, we had a, a lady make a payment, and it was like a 150 some odd dollars and 28 cents. But she made the check out for 150 some odd dollars and 23 cents. You know, it was just a mental lapse. We've all done it. And for that nickel, then she becomes a delinquent. And they're, I mean, our computers, you know, it's in the program that if you come up two cents shy, then you have the penalty uh, put on it. Well, her penalty was going to be over fifteen dollars. You know, it's just ten percent of what the bill is. You know, for five cents, that was an honest mistake on her part. And Sarah was wondering, you know, we have this happen. People write out their check for the wrong amount, and it's never over. I'll say that it's always under. But. Uh, you know, she's wondering if maybe if it's less than a dollar or two dollars, something like that, that we could just go ahead and add that on to next month's bill and not charge them, uh, you know, an amount fifteen dollars for a five cent mistake. You know, so there's uh, a couple of things that I think that she's wondering about. Now, Sarah's very good. She She's 
know, y'all, I need some help on this. Uh, so what, what you all feel about this? Uh, first of all, about the tent, it's going to fall two more times this year. The tent's going to fall on a weekend. And, you know, there's a means for them to pay by the tent. Uh, do we still want to keep it in the tent as a deadline, or do we want to allow them an extra day if the tent is on a weekend? And also, what about you know, payments that are just a little bit light, you know, uh, a dollar light or seven cents light or something like that? Do we go ahead and charge them the full penalty? Or, you know, that's what the ordinance says. But it seems like that, uh, you know, we, uh, I'd like to think that we're a little more compassionate than, um, than you know, doing everything black and white. Uh, we've tried to do everything since I've been in office according to exactly what the ordinance says. That way we don't have to apologize to anybody. <coughs> we don't have any favoritism going on or anything like that. And it's, but we still have those little situations where just, you know, we can hold tight to the ordinance and still it's kind of almost bad PR, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. So I'm open for any kind of discussion that you've got about this. I'd say give them a dollar leadway. Yeah, I think we should give, give them a, them a dollar leadway. leadway. They? It'd be off to pay fifteen dollars over a nickel. Yeah, and if it falls, a good bear could put that nickel in, you know. <laughs> I, I think Sarah should be given the leadway to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if, I think if it falls, it goes over a dollar, though. No. Yeah. If it falls on a weekend, give them to that next Monday. If it the tenth is on the weekend, can we yeah, on that Monday? Times this year. Yeah, but then they come in the next month and say, "Will you let me pay it on the eleventh on the last month?" So what's the difference? There's yeah, a drop box. Drop box. That's yeah. The, yeah. yeah. And now you can do online payment okay. uh, with credit card. So. Okay. Makes sense. I think you could probably the the the. The, the dollar leeway that you're talking about, that could be adopted as a policy yeah. for the city. Okay. If you were to change the due date situation, I think we'd have to amend our ordinance. Okay. So there's, wow. some, there's okay. some consideration. Right. Just about everybody, though, the government, if it falls on the weekend, you got the Monday to pay it, send your taxes in or whatever. Well, they've already had their bill almost two weeks. Yep. You know, it's, it's not like uh, you just got the bill and you're rushed to pay it. You, the bill comes out shortly after the 25th of the month. Yeah, I, got uh, <laughs> I got my bill today for this past month, and uh, you know, I've, you got almost two weeks to pay it, and then after that, uh, with the penalty, we've got you know another 15 days on top of that that we give them, you know, to pay with the penalty before we shut off the water. Uh, it's much easier to deal with people, you know, if we go by the black and white. But, like I said, you know, if you've got those little minor mistakes that somebody makes, surely we can be a little more forgiving for that than, than um, George, I think it's, yes. but I think it's only fair that the council understands from S Sarah's processing standpoint that when she applies those late fees it's like a click of a button so if my check was off five cents literally she will have to go through 1100 accounts to see if any of them were off five cents because it is an it's it's just automated but i mean i'm not saying here nor there i just want you to understand how that system works it's not like that she is oh well they're five cents short therefore they're automatically getting it. It's not that way. The system looks merely at every account, and it's instantaneous when she clicks the button. So she will manually have to go back and manhandle that to catch anyone that is off whatever dollar amount you decide. Well, it doesn't happen very often. I mean, it's not like it's uh, two dozen people every month having that problem. You know, it's just uh, one or two. Usually, it's about all the problem we have with that. But um, George, if I can.
can make a suggestion if, if the council wants to adopt a policy, we can make it a, a formal written policy, but if someone were to inquire about a penalty being assessed and it turned out to be just a one or two dollar short um, uh, underpayment, at that point maybe they could request that it be waived um, and, and put a limit on how many times that could happen within a year perhaps. And that way it's something that if the customer brings that up, that way Sarah is not having to go through 1,100 accounts and only catch one or two possibly. That might be a better solution. Well, she gets a printout of the ones that are, you know, um, After it's applied. that are in our uh, deficient, you know, that didn't make the full payment. She gets a printout of that. So it's not like she has to check all 1,100 of them, but uh, sometimes that list, uh, can be long, you know, with people $7, $10, not paying at all, whatever. So, uh, yeah, I'm in, I'm in full uh, acceptance of you coming up with some kind of uh, policy that we can look at next month. Well, I, I say that you make it no more than a dollar that it's short. And that explain to the customer and so we're trying to be lenient but we can only do this so much. Sure. I think you can put that in that policy and yeah. does the dollar seem to be the agreeable limit for all? Yes. 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 Okay, then Tara, why don't you work on that for next for our next meeting and then we can uh, I don't think we have it, uh, the 10th on the weekend. So you're, um, I'm hearing what, what I'm hearing you say is that go ahead and, and uh, let the 10th still be the deadline. And if they haven't paid, you know, by the 10th, then they, they'll have the penalty on the 11th, even if the 10th comes on the weekend. Is that what I'm hearing you say? Could, could we possibly? If it only happens twice this year, could we possibly put the little statement on the back of the statement saying, you know, like you do on trash days, you know, or holidays that the office is closed? Could you state your due, your due date is the 10th, it falls on a weekend, please it's, make accommodations to get this paid? You, and you can pay online, I think, starting Monday mm -hmm. too, right? So okay. that'll be that'll, that'll be helpful. Therefore, there's no excuses if it's in writing and they've seen it. Right. But I guess my question would be, I don't think you ought to change that date. Right. I mean, it's on the right. bill now. It's right. due to right. But I guess my question would be, what if you have repeat... Offenders. Repeaters doing this. Where's the cutoff at? Yeah. Cut them off. What, back to the money? The yeah. Sales? Sure. That's why I was wondering if in so, this policy I mean, you want to adopt, did you want to say how like many waivers you can do? I feel like you need to put a, a deadline on that. You know, if you get one or two, you know, I think we do like what do we do allow for one or two sewer adjustments a year mm -hmm. one and like one. and like she just had uh, a return check and this individual this is the third one mm -hmm. and what they do they write the go ahead and write the check to get the water turned back on for the 25th and then and then i check the bank and it bounces when somebody short pays you on their water bill <clears throat> you're not losing that money because it's added on to the next month. Right. Right. So we're not, the city's not really losing any money. You're just not getting it right that day. I think the question what Bo is saying is every month, are they doing Throughout that to the where they're carrying? Yeah, same person, they do it. Yeah. So are you going to allow them to do it 12 times, allow them to do the adjustment 12 times throughout the no. year or, or just one or two no. times? or Just a couple of times. Yeah. Okay. Twice at the most. Okay. I'll put that in the policy. When you say an adjustment, are you talking about like if they have a water leak or something like that? No, like no. if 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 the penalty were be, to be assessed because they're a dollar or so short, then the adjustment would be to remove that penalty, but no more than twice a year for that type of occurrence. Right. That sounds fine with me. Yes. Okay with that? Yeah, I'm good with that. Yes. Okay. Anything else? Yeah. Um, I think it would probably be formally adopted when we get the policy written and we'll bring, present it to the council for approval. Yeah. All right. It's, uh, I've got one other thing. I want to uh, nominate uh, Stacy Cole and Maribel Fisher to serve on the EDC as representatives from the council for this coming year. Is there a motion? So I would need a motion to. Uh, well, I don't know. Tara, do you think I need a motion for that, or can I just, uh... Go ahead and 
can do a motion. That way it can be in the minutes, and we'll have it that way, George. I don't have that, right, no, that uh, order in front of me. I'll make the motion. Tony, first. No, second. Jerry, second. All right. All in favor? It's all, all, all. Yeah, everyone. Okay. All right. Thank you. Do you want to go uh, ahead and, George? I, I know there's one other thing. You've got a little piece of paper uh, that says officer and employee ethics. Uh, we have to uh, fill out this ethics form once a year, and just uh, it's just a general form about what kind of a business do you have, uh, you know, uh, and basically, I mean, that's about it. Do you owe anybody anything, and uh, if so, who, and you little person just, like you do. so that we know, you know, that you're not going to be influenced. Uh, <laughs> excuse me. By uh, somebody owing you money, or you owing somebody else money, or whatever. So uh, we fill this out once a year. We keep it here in the office. It's uh, it's not anything really important, killing important. It's just a uh, it's about our ethics, and uh, we try to be ethical members of of uh, Hartford City Council. And mayor. So just fill that out sometime and drop it by the office, and at least we'll keep a folder of it. And, um, that's all I've got. Does anybody else have anything that you want to bring up tonight? David does. Yes, I do. Uh, it has been brought to my attention on Kirk Street. It's kind of dark down through there, and we need some lights <laughs> down on Kirk. Uh, I can't remember the addresses. It's between Old Main and 231. Okay. There's just two lights there, and they're right in the center of the street. Right. They're, they're right there where the intersection is of the Sunset Drive yeah. and, and other street. Yeah, we need one up a little bit and then one down toward 231. Yes. It's pretty dark. Probably need some trees trimmed along there, don't we? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, I'll second. Tony second. All right. Uh, in discussion regarding this, nope. the motion is to add two street lights on Kirk Street between Old Main and 231. Uh, if you're in favor of that, uh, the uplifted hand. Thank you. Okay, that's five. All right. Nope, that's and six. Opposed. Nope. Everybody was uh, up. Okay. Important. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anything else? Get well. Yeah. Get well. I think that's a that's a general consensus. Yes. Please get well, Mayor. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. I'm sorry I wasn't there to see the deer in the headlights look when, with the new members when they <laughs> Dan went over the audit report. So. Hey, I thought he done a really good job. Went through it quick. I was, yeah. I was looking for a long presentation there, but he done really good. <laughs> no, he's, he's pretty short, <laughs> but then, uh, just to understand what he's talking about, so thing. Right. All right, if there's nothing else, I'll entertain a motion we adjourn. Make a motion we adjourn. Tony. Yes, David. Any discussion? All in favor of 50 hand. That's everyone. All right, motion carried. Thank you all so much. Sorry it had to be this way. Well, I get to feel better. Look forward to the next one. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, George. Yeah, okay.